2021 is a hallmark year, not just because we witnessed the rapid rise and fall of the Dogecoin, and I finally got to travel outside the confines of the cesspool, but this year also marks the 20th anniversary of the Xbox and the release of Halo Combat Evolved. With such a monumental year, Xbox had definitely planned to kick it off with the holiday 2020 release of its next-gen console and next-gen sequel. Achievement partially unlocked. Oh, and if you see any weirdness around my edges, it's because I'm on a green screen this time, not because I'm a Cortana-style hologram. At least that I know of. Ah, 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 ah. For the last 20 years, the Xbox consoles and the Halo series have been a perfectly packaged duo, like Dorito Dust and Mountain Dew Backwash. The Halo franchise helped launch the console, made Xbox Live a highly sought-after online service, and continued to be one of the hallmark exclusives that kept fans coming back for more. And in this era of console exclusive wars, Halo was Xbox's biggest gun. And well, it looks like that gun got jammed. So what happened? Well, a little thing called the COVID-19 pandemic definitely played a part. Throughout 2020, studios and developers all around the globe were impacted by shutdowns, stay-at-home orders, and a number of their games were delayed throughout 2020. 343 Industries was no exception. Sadly, being a AAA studio under Papa Microsoft does not grant you a get-out-of-pandemic-free card. In August 2020, the company announced via tweet that Halo Infinite, which had been scheduled to launch that holiday alongside the Xbox Series X, had been delayed until fall 2021, citing the pandemic and other development challenges. For a better grasp on these challenges, let's jump in our warthog and travel even further back to the July 2020 Xbox Showcase demo. In this demo, 343 Industries revealed actual gameplay from map within Halo Infinite. While this demo got some Halo fans hyped, the vast majority found themselves concerned and staring blankly at their screens like my good friend Craig. Was this really the game they would be getting in just a few months? From enemies and environment to the weapons themselves, were these flat-looking figures truly from a next-gen game? Well, yes, thanks to Halo Infinite's dynamic lighting feature. Now, there are a ton of videos out there that get into the real grid of Infinite's dynamic lighting mechanics but I'm going to give you the simple Sessler summary. When items and textures are within the light, they look real good. But when they fall into the engine-generated shadows, they appear flat. I found it very interesting that within the same month, Assassin's Creed Valhalla showcased work-in-progress in-game footage and received more excitement and positive reviews than Halo Infinite's demo. Throughout my many, many years of reviewing games, gaming news, and upcoming releases, I realized that there's nothing more endearing than a bad demo. Actual gameplay demos are companies saying, hey, we're just excited about our game as you are, and we want to show you what it looks like right now. Enjoy! On the opposite end of the spectrum, we see publishers crafting demos that are not lifted from the game itself. They're either designed specifically for a showcase or presentation, or the gameplay changes so significantly these demos are never seen anywhere in the final game. Think of it like your parents talking about the car they bought you and showing you a photo of a Ford Mustang, only for you to arrive at the dealership and you see that it's a Ford Fiesta instead. It's still a Ford, but really, a Fiesta? Take for instance one of my favorite 2013 titles, Bioshock Infinite. This gameplay demo blew my mind and got me excited to explore a jingoistic dystopia with George Washington Killbots. But ultimately, what was showcased at E3 2011 wasn't even a real part of the game. So listen up, gamers. With upcoming titles, you can either have a realistic look at actual gameplay in development that may or may not be polished, or you can have a manufactured demo that may not even be actual gameplay from the title itself. You can't have your pixelated cake and eat it too. So after a lackluster demo in COVID-19, 343 Industries announced in August of 2020 that the game is delayed until 2021. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, there were even more challenges and not the fun Spartan Ops kind. In 2019, creative director Tim Longo departed from 343 Industries amidst the development of Halo Infinite. But don't worry, Microsoft says, studio head Chris Lee remains in overall creative control of the project. Well, in October of 2020, Chris Lee leaves 343 Industries as well. So now we've got a game experiencing delays due to COVID-19, a widely panned demo, and a departure of creative leadership. Talk about the Halo development, triple kill. Making video games is tough. 
Making a AAA game is even tougher. It takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tear-soaked keyboards from a wide range of departments to deliver a great game. Changes in leadership and game design can add weeks or months onto development deadlines. So with all of this information, it makes sense for Halo Infinite's continued delay and lack of a release date. Even as we speak, Halo's release still floats in the holiday 2021 ambiguous abyss, along with my love of eggnog. But on the bright side, it seems like things are looking up for 343 Industries. In December 2020, the company published a development update that included the announcement that Halo veteran Joseph Staten had been brought onto the project. Great! Likewise, the team was hard at work making changes to the lighting and art style after taking into consideration the feedback. Even better! And just recently at E3 2021, we got even more good news about Halo Infinite. Multiplayer is back, featuring cross-play and cross-progression, and oh yeah, if you already have Game Pass, it's free! Now, many of you may be asking right now, after all of the delays and development drama, do we really need a new Halo game? Is this franchise really worth preserving after 20 years as we venture into the next generation of consoles? There's no doubt that Halo Combat Evolved's revolutionary and creative FPS gameplay was the hallmark of the Xbox and helped launch a thousand similar shooters. But just because you are a series that has defined a genre that does not automatically make every sequel you deliver safe from criticism and critique. Since taking over the series from Bungie, 343 Industries delivered us the great Halo 4 and the okay, I'll guess I'll play it Halo 5. So it makes sense that they've got a lot riding on Infinite to revitalize the series, not just for new players, but for their own reputation. You're probably wondering, okay, Sessler, time to give us your hot off the grill, spicy Halo take on how the series should retire. And you know what? I'm not. Look, I am genuinely happy that we have a new Halo on the horizon. The Halo series never hurt me. Halo didn't spit in my food or throw mass at me in a target. I have so many fond memories from the last 20 years of playing Halo. Heck, playing Halo 3 in a New York hotel before the launch event helped me overcome my jet lag from Japan. Thanks, video games. Halo is operatic, not just literally with the swelling orchestra and vocals, but also with its gameplay and story. There are no subtle moments in Halo. Everything is at stake, and that's part of the fun. My point is, Halo has become such a pivotal part of the Xbox's history that it wouldn't be the same without it. And every major gaming franchise, from Mario to Call of Duty, has its share of misses. I'm looking at you, Mario and Sonic, at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Looking at you. So I'd like to end this video with a challenge. Since we're in a new post-pandemic era, let's wipe the slate clean. Let's stop being cynical. Let's be more forgiving to developers regarding demos and delays. And let's all keep our hopes up that Halo Infinite is the next great installment in a treasured franchise. We'll save the cynicism and brutality for the actual review.